Today on Heartland Values with Nurse Bob. Yeah, Mike's been potty training for a while now. Boy, he really gets mad sometimes. Oh, Mikey, what did you do? In your pants again? Shut up, bitch. Jesus, cut me some slack. He hides in his room, the home theater room. He doesn't eat. There's beer cans everywhere. He's constantly touching himself. Mike, Mike, you're 33. <laughs> I know. I know it. <laughs> Help me fix it, Nurse Bob. Well, you're just gonna have to get happy in the same nappy you just got crappy in. But I'm totally trained. I'm 45. <laughs> Woo! We want a man. You need a spanking. My girlfriend Rachel and I have been together for a long time, and uh, she she wants to take it to the next level. Whoa, 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 whoa! How, how long have you been dating? We've been dating for eight years. Listen to me now. Sex is not a natural act. Now look, if we don't teach our kids that, we might as well pack up our toys and say the grand play date is over. Be it Adam and Eve or Hugh and Steve, keep it in your trousers or get arrested for exposure. It's the only way. Okay, people, let's fix it. It's Heartland Values with your host, Nurse Bob. All right, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. God, shut up! Bunch of damn clucking hens looking at a cockerel. All right, today, now, you better bring some quarters because we have a doozy. First, let's meet Matt. Now, Matt's been cheating on his wife. Now, Matt, is, is, is your mistress hot? Hell yeah, she's hot. My father taught me something. With women, if they'll do it with you, they'll do it to you. And I ain't talking about using the tradesman's entrance. Have, have, have you ever heard of a coat hanger? Yeah. How can you be so dumb? Did you climb the stupid tree and hit every branch on the way down? You may remember our show a few months ago with Chuck. Now, Chuck and his wife have been married for three months, and he says he's not ready yet to have kids. I want to wait a couple years. That's your solution? Women, who wants to come up here and beat this man with a stick? Well, we'll, we'll catch up with Chuck and his new best friend, Reality Check, in a bit. But right now, let's meet Catherine. Now, she blames herself because her marriage isn't working. Well, what happened? I came home, and I found other women in my bed. Well, how did you find them? They were right in the kitchen. Now, now, uh, now, hold strong. Now, it's okay. Now, describe your feelings and vitally exactly what you saw. And don't be afraid to get graphic. He was on the kitchen counter, and there were two of them. Oh, they were just glistening. They were going at it, both so sweaty. Ugh! I blame myself. Oh, please help me fix it, Nurse Bob. Oh, you better bet your best and brightest bonnet we're going to fix it. And you know how? Get on the treadmill, fatty. What did you just say to me? Oh, that's your mouth talking. But why ain't your feet walking? What does your heart tell you? It's what I'm telling you. Now, my, my patented definition of insanity is doing something repeatedly and expecting different results, right? Either that or, or fantasizing about your mother-in-law, but let, let's move on now. Now, and, and you keep hitting the buffet. I mean, <laughs> I like to eat, but I ain't fat. If I can do it, so can you. Fix it, girl. Tell me now, tell me, what is cheating? Well, when a monogamous couple decides that... Let, shut up. Let me help you here. Why do people chew gum? It's simple. If the horse is out of the stable, it's time for some hay. And you, you need to ride that horse in the opposite direction and don't look back. I mean, Catherine, what, what are your long-term plans? Huh? Well, first I want to have more children, and I really want to retire in Vice City. <laughs> I don't mean how many hams you got in the oven or how much lard you put in the cheesecake. I'm talking about ending up in the big oven down below. About the fiery cheesecake of hell. Do you know who created Darwin? Well, it wasn't a monkey. Christmas is about more than the pedophile in the red suit and the midgets, though sometimes we do get confused with all the, these cartoon specials on the TV. Now look, life ain't a cartoon. And it sure as hell in a handbasket ain't no game. It's serious, and it's meant to be miserable. Catherine, Catherine, honey, listen to me. You've got some work to do. All right. We'll be right back after this. Go on, girl. It's okay to cry. Coming up next on Heartland Values with Nurse Bob. I would go three or four times a week. My friends thought I was really into water slides or theme parks. I'm so ashamed. Now, Chris, when you look at men playing golf, what are you thinking, boy? Sticking that ball in the green, huh? Huh? I mean, which bit do you enjoy, the game or the shower afterwards? It's time to get some value. Who made you God? 
Why are you acting like the supreme being? You better pray, dipshit, and I'm talking about right now. Because otherwise, you are going to burn. Look, I, I've got some fire lighters here right now. I've got some I've got some road flares and a bottle of paraffin. You want me to set you on fire, Chris, do you? Do you, boy? You ever seen any movies about Vietnam, boy? You ever seen any? You better start thinking and stop stinking. For the collector who has everything, now you can own a piece of our heritage that really means something. It's a taste of history with Old Horsey, a genuine replica authentic working prohibition era domestic usage bathtub gin steel. Relive the humor, entrepreneurial spirit, and tradition of the glory days with a beverage that built a nation. Whether it's ruckus juice, alley bourbon, skull cracker, white lightning, or mama's medicine, no matter what you call it, the Old Horsey bathtub gin still never ceases to delight. With Old Horsey, alcohol is the solution in more ways than one. You can not only take the pain away of daily life, but also put it to all kinds of other soluble uses. Cleaning cuts, removing paint, Molotov cocktails, bleaching hair, removing sight, cleaning the toilet, or use it as a fun addition to breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And your superb vintage is a handy substitute for petrol in your car. And with the world about to collapse with Y2K, you can really never be too self-sufficient. Old Horsey, the genuine replica authentic working prohibition era domestic usage bath Bathtub Gin Steel. Visit bathtubginsteel.com for more. Liberty City Free Radio. It's radio where anyone can have a show. And they do. Welcome back to Heartland Values with Nurse Bob. Okay, we're back. Let's talk to the Heartland. Thanks for having me on the show, Nurse Bob. I love your show. It's fucking great. It's my son, Jeremy. He loves to draw and do sculpture. I think he wants to go to art school. Should I encourage him? You know, be supportive. Don't you think I'll make him a sissy? <laughs> Boy. Do you think I'll make him a sissy? I mean, he already wears a dress. <laughs> Woo, have you got a turd in your pocket? Because I'm smelling something. What you ought to do is encourage him with a whooping. Art ain't no way to make a living. Now, now you be careful. You're going to have your home overrun by trannies. What, did you eat a big slice of stupid pie? Or, or a little slice of moron cake? Next caller. Hi, Nurse Bob. My name's Melissa. How much wine is healthy for you? I was reading in the Liberty Tree that a glass a day is good for the heart. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop. Do you want a divorce? Huh? Do you, Melissa? Do you want a divorce? Um, Wouldn't that be peachy? Wouldn't that just be peachy if we could all just sit around the house swilling red wine all day and and looking at that what a complete the look or or some of them other yuppie hippie catalogs? Now, let, let me guess, Melissa. You've alienated all your friends, huh? Have you? Yeah, mostly because I listen to your show all the time and I tell people they should live by your advice. Uh huh. Well, friends can be very destructive. You know. There are only two things that matter to you. That's me and the executive producer of this world. And when it comes to drinking, now, Melissa, I'll tell you who else likes drinking. The devil. The devil drinks every day, sometimes at lunchtime. Now, in my book, Hey Stupid, Wake Up, The Big Man Wants to Talk to You, I am very clear about this. I mean, oh, sure, you could have a, a glass of Chateau de Buff Cabernet with dinner, or but do you have any idea what this is doing to you spiritually? Um... Or where this ends? No. But now listen, you know what Gandhi says about this, don't you? No. Well, neither do I. It's a sin to read that stuff, you damn heathen. Now open your eyes and shut your mouth, windbag. Whoa. I tell, God really broke the mold when he made you. He put you in the stupid mold and put in extra dumb juice. You shouldn't be reading books. You should be listening to me and then buying my book. Next caller. Hey, nurse, it's getting worse. Well, I'm here to help. You rang the call button. What's on your mind? I keep catching my children playing doctor. My six-year-old even made a speculum. Oh, 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 oh that ain't right. What, what did you do to punish your kids? Time out? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Time out's really effective. This ain't a damn football game. It's a little pastime called life, dummy. We'll only call a timeout when the quarterback is bleeding and, and, and has dislocated his shoulder seven plays ago. What are you talking about? All I want to know is it natural to play doctor. Natural? That? No. The only time your kid should be playing doctor is when you broke the other one's arm. If we don't teach our kids that their bodies are filthy, disgusting, and dirty, that women are sin, and that emotions can be suppressed by cold showers, how... How in the hell are they supposed to grow up well-adjusted? Next caller, you're on Heartland Values with Nurse Bob. Let's fix it. Hi, Nurse Bob. My name's Luke. My wife and I are fighting because I play Exorbio all the time. I love One-Eyed Monster War. Do you have any advice? Ooh, well, what have we got here? Moses up a gum tree without a ladder. Sometimes you have to cauterize the wound, Luke. A stitch in time saves nine. Stitches being the important word. Lick. I mean, Luke. Luke. Luke, you know, no matter how mad you get, a man should never, ever hit a woman 
in public. If you got trouble with your wife, don't tell it to me. Tell the executive producer in the sky. He's going to cancel your sitcom. You need to say to yourself, I'm a terrible person and I should die. You know what? Before we go, I just want to tell you a little story. When life comes knocking, you better answer the door. Remember that? Or you're going to be burning for eternity before you know it. Well, that's all we have time for. Next time, we're going to tell women more strategies for making a successful family life with the help of my newest book, 15 Minutes to Domestic Heaven. Oh, and if you're trying to lose weight, I got some great new weight loss tips from Columbia. Now, remember what my daddy said. Don't you tell nobody about me coming in here at night. That's right. Sweep it under the carpet. We'll see you next time. That was Heartland Values with Nurse Bob, showing why foreign countries hate us. LCFR. More talk, less thought. Now, putting the dork in the dot-com revolution, it's the Electron Zone. Today on the Electron Zone, a computer that smells happy or sad based on the website you visit. Plus, it's a look into the virtual marriage intimacy therapy remedy future of relationships with the virtual reality glove. And loving yourself digitally. Is cybersex the future? And how to find out. Plus, a woman whose love life has gone space age. Tom and I met on the internet a year ago, so I left my husband, and now I think I'm the first woman that is married to a domestic bot. Oh, yeah. I am going to blow my source code all over your face. Plus, tossers unite with the technical operating system 3.0. But self-appointed experts like Steve predict millions of Americans will toss off and switch to being a fruit head, which I'd love to see. The fruit operating system is so much classier. Yeah, if you're stupid and you don't know how to mount your motherboard, it's computing for people that don't know a gig bite from a teraflop. Whether you're a tosser or a fruit, you'll surely want to hear about the new cell phone that lives your life for you and sends you the bill. Plus, we'll review the Freaker video phone and see how well it transmits naked pictures of your aunt. Oh, awesome. And we'll visit a chat room and type with a starving child in Uganda. Hi, I'm Steve. Steve, Unix assassin known as the IP sniffer. Plus, we'll use the word revolutionary a lot and make you feel inadequate for not owning a piece of technology that will be obsolete as the abacus in moments. In moments, Bill! Sorry, uh, my avatar was in trouble and I can't take him back to therapy. Hi, I'm Bill, known on IRC as the Binary Bandit. Managing a life online where you get to swing and mouth off at strangers takes a lot of work. Trust me on that, I'm ahead of my time. Hopefully the media will pay more attention to the people I kill online rather than the people I really killed as a member of the army. <laughs> hey, I say that to every girlfriend I kill. Respawn, bitch! Just kidding, I've never had a girlfriend. Speaking of my Penis. Life online, different than reality for sure, but which is more satisfying? How do you find time to live your life and your virtual life? Let's go to the phones, Emote Carbon. Hey, I was thinking about upgrading to that new version of Windchime. What do you guys think about that? That's yeah, great! The screen savers are amazing! WTF! <laughs> LOL! Look, we all know you spend more time with your computer than girls, so why get one that's complicated? Girls like computers should be easy, not freeze up all frigid-like or crap out on you. You may make fun of us fruits, but we understand each other and have a great time, especially in the ultimate Disc in the Dark online championship! You know what? 10 print go to hell, okay? 20 go to 10. LMFAO! Not! How 1987 of you, a go-to joke! How basic! Yup, you got me there! What's next? A mud? <laughs> next caller! Hi, I was wondering what you guys thought of that movie, The Mainframe, and the controversy over cybersexism? Well, first off, if this were a chat room, I would be typing with one hand. I am H.O., The Mainframe is the greatest movie of all time! Partially because it's so close to reality, especially the robot that defecates and the, the bit about the dork that saves everyone. I agree. And the rant in the movie about backdoor hacking and the fudge factor? Incredible. That was a metaphor from the deep bowels of hell, man. There was a guy last night in the chat room bashing the mainframe, and I had to flame him. I love flaming lamers. Anyway, let's take a break, get some propaganda going on. The number one board game is now a fully licensed video game. Vivisection's Lab Rat Kart Racing. It's better than all those other licensed kart racing games because this time, you don't die of boredom, you die of anthrax. Video games and education meet in this incredible package as you race, chase, and scream your way through a twisty course that bears a marked similarity to all the other kart racing games we made. You won! Cool, you advance to the next level where you race on the same track again. Play Vivisection and Lab Rat Kart Racing today. Ages 5 and up. Rated T for Terminal. LCFR. 
we bring opinions so you don't need them. Welcome back to the Electron Zone, brought to you by the House of Tomorrow. Yeah, peace, love, and unity, and death to all non-believers, man. It's a revolution out there. Yeah, tech revolution, and the revolution is coming to a retail store near you. You know what, Steve? They've been saying it for years, and it's finally happened. Robots are taking over. What was that called? In the future, there will be robots? Modern dance, you lamer. LMFAO, er, but yeah. In the future, is here right now. That's right, the robot revolution has begun. Pretty soon we'll all have devices planted in our brain which tell us when to eat and when we need to go to the toilet. It's incredible, but true. I was surfing about it yesterday. Yeah, but robots won't be big machines that look like people. Instead, they will be small things that exist inside other machines telling it what to do. A lot like modern machines, only robotic. That's the future. Just like the present, only completely different. Hey, let's hit the phones. Converse probability Wave. Hi, this is Ken. I'm calling from Carcer City. I've got a problem with my internet connection. Okay, what's the problem? Oh, uh, so, here's a uh, long story, medium length. I keep downloading these pictures for my hobby, and the FBI keeps turning up at my house trying to arrest me. I was just looking at pictures. I thought the internet was anonymous, and now everyone knows I'm into exotic things. What is this, me culture? I? Me? Listen, dude, we're all one, man and machine, connected. So what if you want to look at pictures of illegally young sluts? We're all the same. I have to go. I have uh, several toasted meat pastries coming out of my microwave. <laughs> Whatever, fruitcake, it's wrong. I made a screensaver about it, LMFAO, at what a noob you are. <laughs> Who's on the phone? Hi, my name is Richard, and I used to be a journalist before the riot. I run a web page about the history of the Internet. You know the one. Wow, that's so next gen. Y yes, yes, but in the 24-7 digital culture, there's a problem. I might miss something really important. So the question is, how do I surf the old ISH? in the shower. Easy, Geronimo. Most laptops these days are completely waterproof and will function fine in the shower. Next caller. Hey, this is Jerome. I've got a real problem, man. I play Cavern of Sorrow online for like 12 hours a day and my avatars come out. I, I don't know what to do. It was right after a mission of Gas Canyon. I'm not prejudiced or anything. It's just not me. <laughs> well, that's tricky. Yeah, I don't know what to suggest. We don't really have a cyber closet. Yeah, yes we do. It's called the web. Yeah. <laughs> Who's on the phones? Hi, this is Denise, and I'm a first-time caller. I'll tell you what, I'm really bored of the internet. It's a big bully. It's about time someone stood up to it. It's ruining our lives. The internet is beautiful. I've met some amazing people in and out of prison online, and now I never have to support my local businesses because I can get my cat litter online. Yes, but it's ruining lives. The internet is crabgrass. It'll keep growing until we're all dead or too fat to care. In my day, if I wanted anonymous sex, I'd go to a singles bar or a car key party, but now it's all in chat rooms. Uh, Denise, you gotta come down or I'm gonna have to frag you. <laughs> but what happens when they can hack people? How do I know my husband is real anymore? I'm gonna have to hack him myself with this axe. Denise, listen to me. Calm down. Wait just to make my... Oh, she's gone. Well, I think that's all we got time for. Hey, stay plugged in and don't forget to check out http colon forward slash forward slash www.electronzoneradio.com Alright, surf safe out there, everybody. We're out of here. Surf safe, everybody. Your mother's a sea prom. Whoa, at least you can program, you fruithead. Tosser. That's the show that takes typing with one hand to a whole new level. This portion of LCFR is brought to you by Salivex. Tastes like your own saliva. Don't hold your breath. Breathing World is next. If you throw away a soda can, you waste more energy than a billion of the world's poor people use a day. In the time it takes for you to sit down and watch one TV show, a million children will have starved to death. Science has proven that people didn't eat animals until a few years ago. And if we continue to eat animals, the aborigine people of the rainforest will die. The entire world could stop breathing any second. So, welcome to Breathing World with me, Melissa Chowder. On today's show, we look at female empowerment in Britain through composting toilets. 
our first guest has done more to help the planet than like anyone. He's Crow, C-R-O-W. You're looking good. Thanks, love. It's your new yoga. Total enlightenment's quite a trip. Yeah, nobody would think you used to attend a private boarding school, then you were a street urchin in London, then a sex addict. Hey, I'm still rock and roll, babe, and I'm also caring. The world, man, it breaks my heart. And trust me, Crow has a big heart. Great, Crow. That is so great. Uh, you're not the first rocker with a conscience, obviously, but you certainly make a lot of noise about your work helping indigenous people. In some ways, we're all indigenous. Remember what I told you, Melissa, when I met you in the rainforest? You said this'll get me the knighthood if I'm lucky. Yeah, well, it should do. Born humble crow. Born humble soon, Sir Crow. Finally, Lord Crow of Crow. Humble man, but also a great one. So, anyway, Crow, tell me about the Crow Fest 98. Well, it was a little idea that grew very big. I had to bring world music and rock and roll and charitable giving together in an irresistible package. Uh -huh. Six years ago, I promised the world I would stop singing to end hunger and protest the loss of indigenous species. Of course, I broke that promise. Mm. The world is glad I did. Even starving people, or, or people who can only speak gibberish, can enjoy ethnically diverse rock and roll. It was wrong of me to hold something back. With Crowfest, I'll be holding nothing back. We're going to be saving the world through yoga, rock and roll, and just a little bit of devilish charm. Wow. So you're helping a lot of indigenous tribes? Yes, absolutely. They get a no questions asked. Don't thank me. I'm rock and roll 25%. 25%? Yeah, it's a very symbolic number. You have to understand the balance. 25% music, 25% communing with nature, and the rest is... is... Well, it's like this. You, you may say eating bark and shaman frogs and pouty lizards is for the hallucinogens, but to me it's medicine, right? Okay, uh, yeah, I guess well, so. Right, right, exactly, Melissa. I was talking to the wife the other day while we relaxed in between bouts of tantric sex, and she said, Crow, you're a great man. And I said, yeah, but I can still be humble. And she said, you've got a massive penis. Whoa. You did well to go solo. And I said, I know it was a shame. They were good guys, but ultimately they were holding me back. And she said, I love you. And I said, I know... That's why I left my first wife and four young kids, and she said that's really spiritual, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Um, so, anyway, I read on the internet that your real name is Bernard Gordon. Don't say that name ever again. Well, I was just, I mean... That man is dead to me. Dead, do you hear me? That's why I don't have a driver's license and have to travel by limo and private jet. When the old me died, I really felt I had to do something. I mean, I have been so blessed, and it is my duty to give something back as an artist and a human being. Listen to this. That chief who appeared on my last album playing that sacred animal skin table, great bloke, really spiritual, right? With the money he got from his quarter of 1% royalty from my last album, he got himself a submarine. <laughs> Dumb bastard lives in the jungle. If that's not freedom, I don't know what is. Okay, so anyway, let's take a break. Liberty City Free Radio. We will never sell out to the corporations. And now for some more underwriting. Joshua, what are you doing in here? Is that a nuclear bomb? Where did you learn how to make this? I found out how on the internet. Ha! <laughs> I'm finally going to show that bitch teacher Mrs. Henderson a thing or two about physics. The internet may appear like it's full of information, but most of it's the wrong kind of information. Like how to pick locks, steal calls from payphones, and suffocate classmates. Keep off the internet. This message brought to you by Citizens United Negating Technology for Life and People's Safety. Welcome back. You're on The Breathing World with me, Melissa Chowder. Coming up later, we've got a really interesting piece on cave art in Holland. But first, a Breathing World exclusive. My special guest, megastar and savior, Crow. Crow, this is not the first time we've met, is it? No, Melissa. We met last week in the jungles of Peru when you came to see me recording my new album. It was really incredible. I love the jungle. Thanks, yeah. Sometimes I really like to get back to me roots spiritually. Yes, you could see that by the 70-foot RV you had flown in just how much. The inside was great, and that water bed. Oh, I need an air-conditioned environment for me yoga. I tried a Native American sweat lodge once. I know ways to hallucinate in a much cooler environment, thank you. Anyway, play the tape. That's why I agreed to come on the show. I could have gone on anywhere. Okay, okay. Well, here is me speaking to Crow last week in a jungle in Peru. 
Can I get some peppermint tea, please? My digestive tract is bunged up. I need to crack. I'm here in Peru looking to visit the river dolphins at a five-star nature preserve and... Uh, oh my god, that's Crow! Wow! Imagine meeting you and, and your PR guy here in the jungle in Peru. Uh, uh, oh, and also a photographer. All right, who are you? Oh, I, I'm Melissa Chowder. I'm here for the interview and photo opportunity. Your people Oh, uh, yeah, up... yeah, listen, I come here to get my people and get away from things. Hey, uh, where's my assistant? Look, look you got five minutes. So uh, what okay, I... all right. Well, um, you look really at home here in the Peruvian rainforest. Well, sometimes it feels like this is where I belong. I'm, I'm here to make an album to stop the catastrophic tragedy of genital mutilation. Yes. I would never let anyone mutilate my genitals. What? I might let him have a go at it, but not the real deal. Well, that is great. Um, but what I really wanted to talk to you about is your inoculation program. Do you love your genitals? Oh, uh, uh, well, uh, yeah. Can you I, play I mean, a tambourine? What? Uh, wait, 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 no. wait, 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 listen to this. That's a penis gourd. Huh. When I shake it, I make music. I've inoculated every kid in this village, inoculated them against the evils of capitalism. I'm sorry, what? Money would just corrupt them, so instead, I've repaid them for the cultural education with some beads. Something I learned off the Americans. You dick. I oh, know, it's huge. Anyway, I spent yesterday doing drugs nobody has heard of. That's the great thing about the Amazon. It's, it's vital to my work. Listen. What? Do you hear that? No. It's the sound of life. I've tapped into that energy in my new record. It's very important. Um, you know what? I want to talk to you for a minute about something that is really beautiful. Natural birth. Oh, it's terrible. Stretches everything out like this. Oh, get off! Oh, my God. Put that gourd back on. Yeah, that was me meeting Crow last week in the jungles of Peru. And you know what? I should sue your ass. I went in Rome, love. <laughs> now, Crow, one yeah. thing you've long campaigned against is medication. Oh, yeah, the yeah. world is so beautiful. It just never makes sense to me why people would want to mess with it. Mm. I mean, I never use drugs or tampons or anything that pollutes the water supply. Exactly. I mean, a little bit of recreational snort is okay, but malaria drugs do you bloody favor. I kill more people than they save. To be honest, we're all one people. I, I honestly believe that. So right, it's okay if some people die as long as I live. Yin and yang, you know what, love? <laughs> I think my down dog is on eight. Fancy a rail? No. No, no, Dwight ruins me buzz. Me buzz is life, man. <laughs> It's like one day I was saying to myself, Crow was saying, what does the world need? The world needs you, mate. Me, mate? Yeah, Crow, the world needs you. Cried, it was a complicated interior dialogue, fella, but I am a complicated person, unique. Yeah, you're a rock and roll singer with messianic delusions. Really, completely original. You know, I thought you cared about the environment. Melissa, look at me. <laughs> I am the environment. Look at my soul. I know it's a cliché, rock god wants to save the world, but that does not stop it being right. Listen, I can have sex for five hours without coming. My testes swallowed a cum. It's incredible. But really, I'm paying into this tantric sex lock. I, I met some really important tribal chiefs down in Zimbabwe. They initiated him into the tribe by butchering an endangered lion and killing a neighbouring tribe. Man, it was beautiful. That's the power of rock and roll, the way Crow does it. We're all one, love. Crowfest 98. It's for a good cause. Great. So you heard it from the horse's mouth, people. The crow's mouth. It's crow, not all. Shut up. Anyway, that's all we have time for. Crow's new album will be out soon and in the bargain bin shortly after that. This has been Breathing World. Recycle, please, we're all suffocating here. We are fucking Yeah, sat on this. <clears throat> LCFR. Liberty City Free Radio. The bold truth. Just like an eagle. Now, prepare to get your juices flowing inappropriately with blood-curdling chef Richard Goblin. It's Cock of All. It's Cock of All with your host, Richard Goblin.
Yes, yes, thank you for the clapping. Okay, cock out, everybody. Hello, everybody, tout le monde, all you Americans out there on the airwaves of hell. I am Richard Gobelin. I am chef, okay? Maybe you didn't know what a chef is. He's like the person who makes your hamburger. Only the difference being, I know how to cook. You see, you flip food over like a fat woman or like a moped, but you do not know how to make love with food. You crap on it like a dog, and then you lick yourself. You... This is culture, huh? If there is not a dirty word in this country, huh? The culinary delights of slaughtering innocent veal calves <laughs> and of boiling animals alive to really taste the suffering, hmm? So let's hit the phone! Like it is a little baby lamb fresh out of its mama's womb and desperate to end up in my casserole. Hello, speak! Hi, Richard. How are you? I love the show. Of course you do. Well, I am in eternal torment, like every genius, since you ask. Finesse in the kitchen, blunt trauma in the bedroom, no? Uh, great. Yeah, whatever. I'm having a real problem with my stuffing. Ah, you are married, no? Yeah. But you cannot get stuffed, huh? <laughs> I've seen this so many times. So many women, so little time. Food and impotence. See, for the stuffing, you try and use your leftover cornbread. When to spice up the food, family must get together. Bring your sister in the kitchen. Open the back door is like love, sherry. Put in the time. Put in the effort. Oven down. Oven down. Then you get a bun in the oven. Mm, maybe you have leftovers. Uh, yeah. Listen, so I do a demonstration, okay? You have in front of me a lovely little goose, all plucked and naked. And I am going to stuff her, okay? Cooking is like, here, take that, you bitch! Take it! Take it! Take it all! Uh, you need a good fisting! Ugh! What are you doing to that thing? Sometimes I use a cucumber, or a turnip, or some frog spawn, but today it is just some breadcrumbs and a bit of spit to lubricate things. Mmm, beautiful! C'est magnifique! Oh my god, you're barbaric! I would never treat my food like that! Pathetic wench! An onion explodes on a plate like a grenade, and you think it's Australian. War and food, they do not mix, unless you are invading. Mm -hmm. I bet you make your man wear deodorant. You revolt me. Barbarian, moi, mm -hmm. je suis désolé, madame, mais it's you who are a barbarian. Nobody call Richard Goblin a barbarian. Rien du tout pas. You Americans, you are all the same, ce sont tous les mêmes. How little you know of la vraie culture, hein? of real culture of le monde. When we join with the Native Americans to defend you against the British, you forget this. You America, you are all the same, huh? Nobody sit down for dinner anymore. That's because, hey, listen, listen to Richard, okay? I would rather eat contents of my toilet bowl after a fat man with hemorrhoids who ate curry than eat the shit most Americans serve. Who is on my phone now? Hi, my name's Deidre. Well, Dreary, would you rather eat the shit most Americans serve or the shit out of the toilet bowl? Excuse me? You heard me. I is the kind of woman who would date a vegetarian. Yeah, of course. I'm not prejudiced. Vegetarian meat? So-called meat-free meat? Okay, so listen, this is like a man who leaves a watermelon out in the sun so it feels like a woman. Why not make love to a woman? You're not Greek! What is it with the watermelon? I'm a married woman. I've got three kids. Kids? Kids? Are you a goat, maybe? I eat goat. Hmm? No, on the grass, Billy. <laughs> maybe you eat carpet? You are insane and offensive. I just wanted to ask a question about the ethical way to eat meat. I'm absolutely terrified of factory farming. Those poor little chickens. Ah. No wonder your husband plays the field. But I tell you anyhow, okay? Mm, listen to Dick. Of course it is brutal and nasty to buy your meat in a supermarket. The thing here in the studio, we have many pretty animals. A beautiful cow, some pigs, a dog, some babies, three missionaries I killed last week. But unfortunately, life is nasty and brutish. Oh, regarde, this beautiful cow, Daisy, is heavily pregnant. Oh, amazing! She's giving birth right into my pan. It's really amazing. Oh, mm, the meat is so tender. Here, Daisy, I'm sorry. Is Daddy going to eat your baby? Poor Daisy. Maybe poor Daisy wants to be mincemeat, huh? Huh? 
Huh? Maybe she is not good a choice. What are you going to say now, vegetarian? You are weak and I am strong. This cow was a vegetarian. She eat like the hay. I think I make myself clear. Let's take a quick break while I drink some of this mess up. Ooh, it's fresh. Hey, baby, what's up? Hey, let me get you a little something. Hey, bartender, couple beers right here. You better get that 40-ounce Marlick away from me. I need some real romance. Getting laid is never easy, but it just got a little easier with Chateau de Buff. The continental, sophisticated, and oh-so-European way to get her shit-faced and sorry in the morning. Ooh, I feel like I'm in Europe. Got some cheese for this shit? It's a perfect companion to the table or nightstand. Grab a bottle, smell the cork, sniff the contents, and look instantly civilized. It's the wine that merges sophistication and nuance with complex and satisfying results. Ooh, this wine's delicious. Let's call knock some boots. Chateau de Buff. LCFR, it's community radio with more syndicated content. Welcome back et bienvenue encore. You're on Coq and Vin with me, Richard Goblin, putting the culture back into your fridge. Speak. Hello, Dickie. I'm so pissed at you. What are you talking to? Your trousers? You gotta stop killing all these animals, man. It's really bad karma. Karma? What is karma? Oh, a bad song, maybe? Hmm? I mean, it's a major buzzkill listening to you slaughter all these animals. What's wrong with teaching people how to cook, like pizza or salad? Something instead of killing these poor, cute little animals. Uh, you know what? Thanks for your very interesting point of view, you big girl! I mean, I ask, which come first, the egg or the chicken? It matters very little, okay? They both taste nice after a cockfight. Pathetic! But since you ask, you want old Goblin to cook you a pizza? Here it is. Eyeball and perineum calzone. Mmm. Delicious. First, take a large mammal, say a cow or a rhino. Then take the eyeballs and the perineum and slice them up. Okay, and then maybe you kill the mammal. That is up to you. Then you put the whole thing in a calzone et voila! Magnifique! I feel I can see what animal once saw, feel what its perineum once felt. Oh, it's really amazing. It's really fresh and hearty. The children, they will love it. Who is on my phone? Hi, Richard, I cannot get my souffle to rise. I mean, I've been pulling at it for weeks, but the bitch just lies there like a dead dog, not getting up. Ah, uh, the souffle. Many, many brave men have fallen at her feet, unable to master her tricky ways. Your face goes numb, just trying, huh? Okay, so first, you must slap her about the bit, show her who is boss, and then you must put in the vital ingredient into any souffle. Fresh eggs, right? Exactly! This is why the souffle is only on the menu once a month in my restaurant when my wife can spare it. <laughs> Next caller, dammit. Yeah, hi. I've been listening to your show over internet radio and... Maybe so you can touch yourself and look at funny picture, huh? No. You've got to stop with the stereotypes. I've been to France. The people there are cool. This whole thing is nonsense, perpetuated by the media to distract us from the real issues. The media, huh? La media. Okay, well, so you know, maybe you go watch some weasel news, huh? Well, I guess what, buddy? I cook weasel, I wear the fur, and then pop you in the pooper. What? What? You don't understand, Goblin? Am I not speaking American? Let's go have some grits, Jethro! But no, I must teach you slowly the fine cooking. Next time on the show, we microwave a hamster. Until we meet again, si vous play. keep your cock out of the van. That one is particularly popular with the animal rights crowd. But as we know, animals can't vote. That's why we have to kill them. Support for LCFR is brought to you by Musty Pines in Vice City. Old people cluttering up your home? Send them to Musty Pines. Next up, it's the radio host who's been run out of Vice City and San Andreas. It's Laszlo with Chatterbox. What? Uh, hey, welcome to Chatterbox with me, Laszlo, and you, the good citizens of this town. Now, you know the format of the show. You call me up, you complain, we agree the world's terrible and retarded, there's nothing we can do about it, and we listen to some commercials. That's right, yeah, hey, it's the American media. If you don't like it, you're in for a pretty bumpy ride. Now, this is the show that gives Liberty City a voice. You know pre-screened over the phone. Let's, uh, let's go to Kara online, too. 
Yeah, Laszlo, you are so right about domestic violence and the Internet. You're telling me that thing makes me want to put my fist through something. Tonight, we're going to have a public forum about turning off the Internet. I'm with a group called Citizens United Negating Technology for Life and People's Safety. <laughs> what? You heard me, radio boy. First the Internet, then we're turning off the phones. Okay, sounds good to me. Hey, let's go uh, to the phones here, Matt. Matt on line 7. What's up, Matt? The name is Matt. Yeah, okay, I got that, stupid. I want to talk to you about urban planning and religion. That sounds my favorite combination. What's up? People wonder why Liberty City is a town full of heathens and why no one ain't going to church here. Do they? Do they really? Yes. Who? Me. Okay, so when you say people, you mean everyone thinks like you. Shut up, girly. Listen, this is important. I'll tell you why no one is going to church here no more, because the cathedral is damn intimidating. Old things are scary. Uh, c come on, the cathedral's beautiful. Ah, uh -uh, son, it's all pointy and official looking. Ain't no one wants that. This is suburbia, and what doesn't connect to the great computer will die. What folks want is a nice big postmodern square building with internet terminals and foosball tables to worship in. Uh, okay, so let me get this straight. You're one of those people that want to mow down the beautiful cathedral garden and, and replace it with a concrete square? Dude, wake up! Are you blind to the future? It's right. It's what God wants. All right. And how do you know this? What, did he send you an email? He told me. Yes, he did. He told me, block that awful phallic monstrosity with a beautiful concrete square. And if you happen to make a healthy profit for your troubles, then it's me moving in mysterious ways. So that's it. I'm campaigning to build a beautiful new cathedral in the old garden. Whatever, dude. Maybe you should be listening to the Electron Zone. <laughs> I love a man trying to profit from religion. Makes you proud to be an American. Let's hit the phones. Yo. Uh, oh, hello? Y yes, hello. You're on Chatterbox. W what's that noise? My name's Lenny. I, I want to talk about shaving. Oh. Okay, what's the trouble? You had a weird rash? Uh, uh, there's no trouble. I just, I just can't stop. Uh, what? I love it. And I realized something really important. Oh, God. If you shave downstairs, he looks a lot bigger. You know, if you remove the brush, the tree looks massive. What are you talking about? Yeah, man. Now I don't have to get surgery down there. I just thought I'd share that with a few people. Come on, Laszlo. Don't tell me you haven't thought about it. Where do you get ideas like this? Like, my mom said, uh... All righty, then. This show's going great. Uh, this is Chatterbox. What's ever on your mind, however big or small, just give me a call. Lines three. If you shave downstairs, he looks a lot bigger. <laughs> Go away. Please, stop calling the show. This is Chatterbox. Hello. Please be a normal human being. That's <laughs> your show sucks. Dude, you're going to get no argument from me. Today's show is rubbish. What do you want to talk about? How come I can't eat people? Okay. Who says you can't? Wait, were you a socialist or something? Talk more about eating people! Next caller. <laughs> Hi, my name's Ursula. I'm a white witch. I have the power of the night. Oh, boy. Hey, you are... Oh, jeez. Okay. I am your biggest man. You aren't going to complain about my clairvoyance or something. Have you been snorting some mugwort? Well, of course. <laughs> what is with that laugh? So listen, we're having a meeting of our coven, and we're all really big fans of yours. Wow, that's cool. Hey, hey, here's a little advice. Guys really aren't into chicks who say they're witches and they can cast spells and practice magic and they have an altar. I, I think you're just a confused goth chick. Hey, I'm not confused. It's my cousin. We're really big fans. I've got several photos of you. <laughs> my spirit medium says we were married in a past life. And you know what? I was the man in the relationship. Oh, easy. You're freaking me out, dude. Hanging upside down to sleep doesn't make you cool or alternative, all right? <laughs> I know, because I tried it. Hey, are you single? Yes, uh, I, I mean, no, I mean, I, I'm married to, to, to three women. Please, I still, can we? Okay, but just to counteract what that guy just said, I never shave. The dark forest is quite enchanting. G go away. Get off my phone. Get off my show. What is wrong with this city? It's 1998, people. The millennium is almost upon us. You know, this is much bigger than the conspiracy of daylight savings time. We're supposed to be worrying about computers accidentally launching nuclear missiles on us and how to make a fortune investing in cyber kitty litter. All right, let's take it up a notch. I beg you, please. Think of my career. It's going down the cramper here. I, I mean, I'm a nice person. I deserve to do well. I've, you know, people like me, I've only betrayed friends once or twice, and, and they had it coming. Line four is Chelsea. She wants to respond to one of our previous callers. That guy was talking about eating people. If you knew what was in our food, you would never eat again. Like what? Like honey. Do you know what honey is? It's bee shit. 
Why would you spread feces on toast? I like honey. Oh, that figures. What a surprise. You're into that. Oh, let's just spread feces all over ourselves. That's disgusting. The killer bees, they're coming. Trust me. And I trust we'll have a better caller over here. Hi, this is Flat. I'm the first time caller. Well, don't tell me. You're a vampire. Ooh, I'm scared. What is wrong with you freaks, okay? Your music is horrible. Turn on a light. Get some sun. No, actually, I'm an underwear model. Why do you insult me? Is this typical in your country? You... Your show is terrible. Oh, dude, I'm really, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having a really bad show. Okie dokie. As you say, no biggie. Unlike me. Massive. Huge. Shaved or unshaved. Like a baby arm. This is why I model the underwear. Enough. Enough with the personal size or grooming or the shaving or the growing and the thing. Let's talk about politics or public safety or, or Dormatron bondage or something interesting. What's wrong with this town? You're sick. You know, this kind of rubbish never happened to me back in the 80s. The 90s are crap. Do you, do you agree, Line 1? How should I know? I'm seven. Y you are? Yeah, I'm a big fan of yours. I love the show. Yeah, when I grow up, I want to be a witty radio host with a made-up name. Uh, aren't you a little young to be listening to this show? No. My mom lets me listen all day because she works really hard and needs long baths. Why is that? I don't know. After her tennis lesson, she's always screaming from her room about what a dirty girl she is. <laughs> Okay. Laszlo, do you know what fuck me harder means? Whoa, whoa, uh, dude, don't drop the F-bomb. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course I know what that means. I thought so. I knew I learned it from somewhere. My mom heard me say it, and I wasn't sure who something that I heard her tennis coach say, or something that you said on the radio. I said it was probably you. Hey, it wasn't me. This is a show sanitized for your entertainment. So now you're being sued. For 150 million! You're gonna be on welfare, ha ha! Gee, thanks. I love you, Laszlo! Uh, uh, let's take a break. <laughs> God, I love this town. This is Data Station to approaching spaceship SS Teague. You are out of approach vector. Please respond. <laughs> Please respond. Oh no! They're coming back! In space, nobody can hear you cry. He's back. It's Space Monkey 7, the video game that swept through Japan and Europe. Now America gets to destroy mankind all over again. Ah, Space Monkey! After a nuclear holocaust, the monkeys leave Earth, but they return to destroy the dark simian research facility controlled by Dr. Chank. Ah, Space Monkey! I stick those bananas up your ass, Pass Monkey! Find the fossils, and not the ones in our game design department. Discover your origins. Give in to the beast within. Darwin's dangerous idea just got worse. It's fun, family-friendly apocalypse that will keep your little monkeys entertained for hours. Ah! Space Monkey 7. Space Monkey! LCFR. It's freedom. Freedom. And like freedom, people are begging to take it away. All right, we're back on Chatterbox. Let's go to the phones. Yeah, I agree with what you said about Vinewood. That town has got to stop churning out heartwarming movies with kids and shit. I tell you, if I see one more damn movie with ten kids and a dog in a wheelchair and some damn baseball championship, I'm going to start killing people myself and blame it on Vinewood. Hey, that sounds reasonable to me. Yeah, man, it's like albinos. They're taking over. Oh, uh, okay. Let's all have a huff of lithium and take a deep breath, all right? Uh, next caller. Hey, Laszlo, you ever eaten anybody? Oh, God. Not you again. Go, go ruin somebody else's show. You fucking suck. Line four, you're on Chatterbox. Hello? I listen to your show every day. It means a lot to an old woman. Yeah, well, you know, the nursing homes love me. I used to love broadcasting live from that Musty Pines back in the old VC. Uh, I need some help with my family. Well, that's cool. We can talk about anything on the old C-Box. What's your name? Enough with names, sonny boy. <laughs> Gee, okay. Okay? So this is how you do it? You get on a guest and you make them feel funny about their names? No, listen, it's cool, Grandma. Don't get your wrinkles in a wad. Grandma? Oh, what's your diaper? You call me Grandma? How about you call me the woman who just put a hit on your fake name, Midwestern Ass? How about that? Call me Grandma. I call you Dead Lazarus. Dead! Uh, I'm sorry, it's not Lazarus. It's, it's Laszlo. Hello, turn your hearing aid up. You betcha, sorry. I come on here to talk about my family problems. About how my son does not love his mother. Real problems about a boy who is confused and lonely and will not take a bath no more with his mama. And I get some horseshit from some microphone fairy. How about you shut your big mouth, Lazarus, before someone blows...
blows a hole in your head, buddy! I, you know, I ask you, why do I even bother? All right, the lines are open. Let's go to line eight. Hi, Laszlo. I'm a mermaid. I'm a big fan of the show. Let me take a wild guess here. You're having guy problems. Why aren't men interested in me? I'm a great swimmer. Well, you know, the smell's a little... I don't smell like fish. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what they all say. You know, you can never tell that you stink until it's too late. I learned that a long time ago. Well, it looks like that's all we have time for, which is a, you know, a damn shame. Uh, French chefs and self-righteous rednecks don't deliver the kind of radio I can deliver. But, uh, you know, me and my buddy Donald have got some big plans for this station. Seabox, 24-7. We'll see you next time. That was Chatterbox with Laszlo, proving the American educational system really is failing. LCFR. Free radio. Not underhanded. Underwritten. Now, some cheap syndicated content from the South.